Okay, in this talk, we're going to look at GPG, which is a GNU public key cryptography program and it's a successor to PGP, which, which was the uh, used in the 1990s, but it was really hard to get because it had a lot of export restrictions and many countries don't allow you to export it. So eventually, the GNU version is uh, free and exportable and is everywhere in the world and every computer can install it. It's a free uh, program which plays public key and you can sign documents and protect your documents using GPG. So this is a sample exercise, it just gives you an idea how public key cryptography works and it's mainly command line but there's a UI also. So let's see how to use it. So we have GNU privacy guard, that's GPG and before that was PGP, pretty good privacy and PGP got bought by some company so right now you don't get to buy it and GPG is free and GPG has been really active developed. So first thing you need to do is install GPG, the command line version on Linux it should be there on your computer. Windows you can just download GPG. Look on Google you'll find the version for your Windows. First thing you do is check the GPG minus minus version. It will tell you which version of it is. And there are many versions around so you should probably using the latest version. And the first use is uh, you say GPG minus gen key. That means you will generate a key. And keys here, uh, a hexadecimal uh, ID, and that is your. So you're generating a key pair. So the key pair is basically a public key and a private key generated for you. And there's some some number, and it's basically a random number. It's supposed to be unique, as as far as it can be. And then all this stuff goes in the directory in your home directory tilde dot gnu pg. And the second, uh, the next command you can use is gpg minus minus export minus armor so basically gpg is going to look at your your key your the generated key your ultimately trusted key and put it in ascii format using the armor because the armor option and save it and you save it redirect it to public key dot ascii file and that's how you save it and somebody sends the ascii file you can just gpg minus import will import it and you can even sign using the minus sign key. So you are signing the key for Red Hat in this case. We will come to that later. So before that what is the purpose of GPG and stuff? Let us look at the password size because the size of your password is directly proportional to how safe is your data. Because uh, what happens is somebody can just try all the combinations if your password is really small. So we are looking at a uh, random printable string that means there are no funny characters in your password. So the size can be 6 character, 8 character, 12 character, 15 character, 60, 20 character and 6 character corresponds to 40 bits of data and one, 20 character corresponds to 130 bits of data and how do you check how many bits of data is correspond to? You take a random string and compress it with gzip and removing the header you can count how many bits does it compress to and 6 character b can be a supercomputer can check all the passwords of 6 character passwords in few minutes 8 characters will take few hours so 12 character password if you have you are safe it takes decades and of course this is like old slide so computers are getting faster so 15 16 characters would be uh, sufficient for your password and 20 characters uncrackable that is depending on the type of computer algorithm you are using also. So let's look at, uh, so basically you should be using around a large password like 12 to 15 characters of random uh, string and if you can't use random strings you can use couple of words and that's called passphrase instead of password and phrase means basically you can use spaces between your words. So you can say this is my password instead of just password being a word it's a phrase and it's pretty long and then it's harder to attack using a dictionary and make sure you don't use something that you commonly type in into your computer because everything you type into a computer can be captured by somebody and then they can collect it as a dictionary everything that you type in your email can be used as a dictionary to attack your password so let's see uh, what what is a key pair so whenever you run P, uh, gpg or ssl or anything any public error, you, you generate a key pair and then everybody a, every session generates a key pair. So every user, every 
every transaction generates a key pair. So what's a key pair? Key pairs are two two large random numbers, and having one gives you no clue how to get the other one. And one one part of the key is called a public key, and one part is called a private key. And a private key you keep to yourself. You never let it out of your hand. And a public key you can post it on the ser on the server wherever you want, on your email or wherever, or publish it in a directory so that everybody knows that's your key. And that's what you use to sign or uh, they can check that you have sent the data. So let's see how to use it in GPG. So before that, GPG keeps asking you a passphrase. That's not your password for GPG. It's a passphrase to lock your private keys. So passphrase is something that you type in. And the private keys are actually large uh, numbers. Maybe 128-bit or 256-bit numbers. And they're really huge random numbers. So, And the thing is you can't leave them on your computer because somebody could just copy off from your computer or wherever. So GPG keeps it locked using a passphrase and that's why you need a passphrase every time you use GPG. And we'll see how to make it easier to type in like 20 times. The passphrase has to be safe and long. So we'll come to that again, the passphrase. So first thing you do is you generate a key, key pair. It's easy to generate but hard to factor. So it's a large random number. First the computer generates a large random number and it generates we look at in a later lecture lecture on RSA how to do example of a key pair generation using number theory. But the private key is complete. Uh, given a private key, you can generate a public key, uh, private key and public key. But you have one. You cannot get the other. It's very hard to crack. Uh, but actually, in this this slide is slightly wrong. This picture because the private key and uh, generally includes the public key inside the thing because they anyway know it everybody knows the public key but knowing the public key you can't get a private key this is a really hard problem and and crack is basically depends on factoring a like really large number that gpg generated random a number prime number or not a prime of a, a random two random numbers which are multiplied and it has only some factors few factors that and one factor is one generates a private key one factor generates a public key and if you could factor that numbers quickly, you could actually get one from the other, knowing the, the large random number, which is public probably because of the public key. So how do you go about doing it? First thing on Windows, you can install GPG for Windows, which comes with a GUI. And Sigwin has GPG command line. Linux has GPG. And if it doesn't have it, you can install it. You can look online on Google for GNUPG and read the how-to or oh, mostly you'll not be reading the lots of commands you'll never use you just need to know basics to get started and to understand the whole uh, key, pr key generation process and usage okay so after you install it in windows generally the home is in some really weird place so what you do is you create a home in c colon and then use a, the, the cmd command make link uh, slash directory and app data is basically C colon users your username app data roaming and it's, it's this weird windows uh, folder naming convention S but then the thing is uh, sometimes GNU PG puts your stuff in app data GNU PG so you link both of them together to, to a percentage home which is dollar home on Linux or Sigwin dot GNU PG so when GNU PG looks in your home dot GNU PG actually finds it here so the UI and the command line basically use one folder instead of having two copies of the keys. So basically these two directories are the same and one is a link to the other directory. And it's really convenient to use make link whenever you're looking for a deep nest, deeply nested directory like desktop or something. You can just say make link slash d app uh, slash c colon users username desktop to uh, desktop a link. So that's easier to find stuff. So what is a key manager? Uh, First is you have a bunch of keys. You don't have one key. You have like you can generate as many keys as you want, and each one is a unique key pair, and they're stored in in, a, in your .gnu gpg folder, and your home directory. And then it's really hard to type in all the key numbers and stuff. So what you do is use a GUI program, which one is Cleopatra. You just say, and if you install your GNU tools in uh, gpg in c colon tools gpg for win. And install everything as admin because if something goes wrong, it's really hard to figure out if permissions go wrong. These programs will not tell you what went wrong, it'll just say cannot find something. So install everything, run everything as admin and put it in C colon tools so that 
your folders are easy to find and there's spaces in the path you're on your own don't use spaces so what you do is you go to Cleopatra start the program which is a key key manager say file new certificate create personal open PGP key pair and there are many different type of keys and we'll not get into all of them but uh, you have options of doing all that as you go along and you'll find out as you learn to use uh, all these tools so you make a key type in your name your email and you put some comment and and then passphrase passphrase we saw earlier was to lock your private key and then you can look at the details and then you type in your uh, so the thing is the advantage of GPG for when is that it has a pin entry program and the problem is that uh, entering keys is a big pain on the passphrase on Windows and Linux so you need a pop-up window in which you need to type in your password and, it, and this thing is telling you the quality of your password and you have enough characters till it's green it's red means that the password is too small and not safe and then after it's generated it will give you a fingerprint of your key so that uh, you don't actually need to remember the whole key you just have to remember a few characters to make sure that it's your key not somebody else's key or it didn't get changed so now you're ready to use it so once you have it then you can say uh, decrypt or verify file sign or encrypt files so that's all that's needed to run gpg and this is the ui version and the command line version you generate a key you you export your key so in this case uh, i'm I'm, uh, I'm exporting my public key to uh, this one export to this is my email id and all you could do is send your key to a key server because a, a direct a public server where everyone can find your key say gpg minus send keys your email and key server you need to give some some url which is this is a key server protocol handle handler and then subkeys.pgp.net so it keeps changing you look on google which are the servers so mit is one place where people can save their keys and then if your friend sends you a key you can just import the friend's ascii key into your home directory and your home dot G GNU PG or you can search on a key server you can say GPG search keys your friends email ID and give a key server and then you can read more about it on Google or the help so that's about the using the keys and then what else can you do 